Hello everyone. This week in the Quercos workshop, we've got a couple of things we're going to cover. First of all, we're actually going to go over how to do an uh, upgrade to the latest version, which came out last week. Then we're going to do a little bit on exploring the data, but mostly we're going to cover the exporting the data, um, cover some of the stuff that we did last month. Um, looks like the sound dropped out from Google Hangouts for some reason. So the latter part of that workshop um, didn't go up properly. So we're going to cover some of that um, how to export the data to a whole variety of different software packages and different ways that you can visualize and explore the reports that you can generate. So the big news is that last week we released uh, version 1.2, which adds really one big feature to Quercos, and that, as you can see here, is a CSV import. And what that means is that you'll be able to um, actually bring in um, projects other different kinds of projects, um, for example, from spreadsheets, from things like um, SurveyMonkey or LimeLM, um, lots of different examples which um, allow you to um, work more with survey data um, and analyze those open-ended questions in Quercos. So first of all, we're actually going to close this down now and just show you how to do the um, update. So, all you need to do if you are just using the trial or if you want to start from scratch is just download the file from the website. Um, let's go and find that now. So you just need to go to www.quercos.com. And then if you go to Get Quercos and click on that link there, the download, you'll see here the download for Windows or Mac. So you just need to choose the one that's right for your platform put in your email address, and then the download will start. And so you can see that's going away here. So what we want to do as soon as that's finished downloading uh, is just double click to run the installer. And when you install the new version of Quercos, all you need to do is install it over the last version um, which you installed. So. By default, that will be in the um, Programs Files folder. Uh, just have to accept the agreement here. And so this is it in the Program Files uh, x86, if you're using 64-bit version of Windows, um, and then the Quercos folder. Uh, now, if you're using uh, Quercos version 1.0, just make sure that this is um, pointing at the right folder. Um, and then all you have to do is click Next and the update just basically installs itself over the old version, doesn't change any of your projects, doesn't change the list of recently used applications or anything like that, and it allows you to make sure that you're working with um, the most recent version um, and able to do CSV import and a whole bunch of um, other things we added in version 1.1 as well. There's no compatibility problems moving backwards and forwards through them. It doesn't affect your... Um, license if you've already had that activated you don't need to do anything that will keep that the way it was and then you can just click launch quercos and then the most recent version will come up and you can check which version you're using just by looking at the top and bottom here where it says version 1.2 so what we're going to do now is just go through um, the breakfast example which we've had before um, looks like i've been opening that before somewhere else okay so um here we've got some of the work that we've done in some of the previous workshops, just a little bit of a coding example here. Um, there's not very much in here, so I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and actually open one of the other files here. So here if we choose project, new or existing, open other. Now I'm just going to show you where you can download these uh, example files from if you want to follow along at home. So if you go to the Quercos website and then go to the um, support tab here, you'll see um, a link here to view our workshop materials. And if you click that in the examples section there, there are two examples here. So the first is the project which we did on the Scottish referendum, and you can download all of the sources and files from there. And the other one is the uh, breakfast example that we use in these. So you'll see um, there's a variety of different files here. There's These are the raw text files that you can put in, a variety of different formats. 
download a zip file which has got everything in here. It's actually an example report here which has been generated with Quercos. So if you wanted to look at that, you can see um, what the reports would look like. If you don't want to install Quercos for yourself and generate them. Um, and also there's a Quirk file which you can use in opening Quirk to um, see the actual kind of coded example that we use. So that's going to come up here in a second. Yeah, it's gone behind the other one. Great, there we go. So this is the example as you'll see it from the website. I'll just turn off the numbers here and make this full screen view. Okay, so now what we've got here is um, all the coding that we've done on the left of the canvas um, and the highlights here showing the coding in the text view. So let's imagine now that you've taken this example from the website or you've got to a stage in your project where you finish the coding. Well, what kind of things can you use to um, visualize and explore the data? Um, we've done a little bit of this in previous videos. I'm going to go a very quick overview of just one of the things you can do here, which is with the overlapping codes. So for example, if we want to right click on healthy and then select the overlap view, what we see here is the cluster view, which the closer these circles get to healthy, that's the center bubble that we selected, that shows the more they're correlated. So here, there are two overlapping codes with healthy and diet. So when people are talking about diet, they think that's a healthy thing. Okay, that makes sense. Click on the home button to go back. But then if we right click on something like dislike, and then show the overlap view, okay, well now we see people dislike fruit. Um, and children apparently, or maybe children dislike things. If you click on any of these, you can see the text which is overlapping here. Now, the overlapping text is basically counts um, any instance where there is an overlap of any of the codes. So here we have dislike and children. So I think, yes, that's the blue children category there and dislike. So that's the overlap there that it's picked up. And there's another one here. So it automatically looks for these while you're going around doing your coding and then generates these views on the fly. So if you wanted to change this and put this um, in somewhere else, for example, then we talked about coffee, that will update in real time and the coffee bubble moves closer and closer together. So if we do that again, coffee again becomes closer, closer and closer until it um, overlaps entirely with the dislike. So, Remember, you can undo any of those coding actions at any point. So we'll undo that, um, all those additions to coffee. You can see coffee bubbles shrinking there as we did that. But mostly what I want to focus on um, is the various different export options here. So when you've done your coding, how can you share this with other people? The first thing I want to show is the um, Word document export. This is the kind of a very useful way to show the entirety of your text and how you've done the coding. So there are two options here. There's export all sources as a Word document, and there's export each source as a Word document. Now what the first one does will be to generate one large Word file with all of your sources. So that's all of the people um, that we have in our project here in one long Word document. And the other option here is to create a separate Word document for each source. So then we'd have one for Simon, one for Mubarak, and one for Jane. Each is a separate Word document. For now, we'll just select export all sources as a Word document. And now we'll give this um, a title. Let's call this everything. Everything in the project. And if we save that, Word will open and shows all the highlighted text here as comments. Now, in most versions of Word, this will also be color coded in the same way that you did the coding. Um, and unfortunately, on my version of Word here, I've changed the uh, default views for the markup here for the review. So it's not actually showing the colors properly. Um, so I apologize for that in this example, but for pretty much everyone else, unless you change the defaults, you should get the right colors here showing um, which topics you've associated with which section of the text and also the name here of who did the coding and because these are comments this is something that you could just open in any version of word and give to anyone who's got word or just print out with all the pretty colors on so that's one method of doing it the other way that you can get data out of quercos 
is with the CSV export here. Now this is useful to basically export the whole database of your project into a format that you can put into a piece of spreadsheet software like Excel or a statistical package like SPSS or R if you wanted to do more quantitative analysis. Now what happens when you select export as CSV files is you need to choose a folder in which to put that because it will generate a series of different files, each of which are about separate elements in the project. So for example, if we will create a new folder here with a new folder button and we'll call this CSV export. And then in here, we can select this folder. And now this pops up here with all of the different files, which this is generated. Now you'll see that there's uh, separate ones here for the questions and answers. If you're using a structured query project, there's one which just describes all the quirks. So if we look in this one here, it'll open in Excel. You can see here that this basically describes all of the different aspects of the quirk. So the color with a hexadecimal color number, um, which if there is a parent, so minus one is says that there is uh, no parent for this quirk, or if there is a parent, that's for quirk number four, and what's that, breakfast. And you can see here also the title of the quirk, who created it, and when. So there are various separate um, CSV files for each element of the project, including for the metadata and various things like that. The most useful one to probably work with, though, is the highlight file. And if you look in that, that basically shows all of your coding events. So here, for example, you can see each of the quotes which has been attached to which particular quirk, it gives you the ID number here. Um, and it also tells you which source that came from with the source ID number um, and the length of the piece of text which has been quoted here. And then finally, um, where it starts in that particular source, who did that, and then a uh, Unix timestamp code. So this can be useful for um, showing lots of different things about how the project went, what things have gone in which code, one person has been doing more than another. If you need to do this in a more um, statistical way or generate uh, graphs, for example, or something like that, then you can do that uh, in here. So for example, maybe we wanted to look at um, uh, how long it elapsed between these different coding events, or if we wanted to run an average. So here we can see, uh, this is Daniel. Well, how, what's the average length of his coding? So if we select all of that, we see down the bottom is generated the average code here. So that's 79 characters long. If we look at um, JSL, this other user here, what's their average? 126. So maybe that's something that's interesting. But you can do any level of kind of statistical analysis you want to generate graphs based on this data um, in Excel, SPSS, R, or even some other uh, qualitative analysis packages will let you import the structure um, from a CSV file. So that's a quick overview of what you can do with the CSV export. It's probably something that's more useful for advanced statistical users, but it's nice to have there as an option to know that you can always do get your work out of Quirkos and into something else if you want to do more work with it later. Now, the other thing which we can also do is generate the reports. Again, we've covered these a little bit um, and we'll go over them again. What I want to demonstrate is how you can also generate reports um, for just specific parts of the data. So here, if we select the query screen button and then the comparison view, now what we can do is run two queries side by side and see what the difference is. So we always look at the gender. So maybe let's look at city. So we choose city Belfast versus city Edinburgh. We run that query. Okay, great. So this is what the people from Belfast on the left are saying about dieting. And this is what people are saying from Edinburgh about dieting. Okay, not nearly as much for some reason. But if that's something that's interesting that we want to share with people, we can generate a report which just has the quotes from the people who live in Belfast or actually any of the different queries that you can run here. So you can run the queries on any of the property values. So here we have city, gender, age, um, which we've defined in this project, but maybe also who did the coding, who created a particular quirk, um, or when that um, piece of coding was done, or when that quirk was added. So there's various different ways that you can um, refine those queries. 
And then if you select, for example, the left query report here, and this is basically going to generate a report which will give us an overview of the whole project, but just include the quotes from people who are from Belfast. If we clicked on the right report button here, this would tell us just the quotes from people from Edinburgh. So this takes a little bit to, of time to generate as it generates all of the images for all of the overlap views and things like that. And what you can see here on the left is the preview of what the report looks like. And if we scroll down here, we'll see that there aren't really very many quotes here and they're only coming from, is this just coming from Simon? Yep, looks like all the quotes here are from Simon because uh, I guess he's the only person that's from um, Belfast. So that's a way where the general overview picture of the canvas here and the summary and the metadata summary here um, is for the whole project. So this shows people across the whole project come from Belfast, Edinburgh and London. But the refinement here is that all of the quotes only come from that particular subset that we selected. So the other options we can do here is we can explore this more in the web browser. We can print off a copy of this report, save it as a HTML file. Now that's useful because it also saves a folder with all the images in. So that's where you can get the images if you want to pull those into uh, Word or into a PowerPoint report and also a PDF file here. So if we choose the save HTML as well, let's just call this Belfast report. Um, breakfast example. Whoops, putting that in the wrong dialogue. Let's create a new folder called Belfast report. Good. So now in that folder, we've got a report, which we double click will open um, in a, whoops, that's going to update itself, um, which will open in standard web browser. There we go. And we've got all the options here on the right to um, customize which different bits are going to appear uh, in our project. But also what's generated here is this data folder. And in here you can see that there are overview pictures for all the different quirks with the relative sizes, the hierarchy of any of the examples. So here this is the um, hierarchy for the breakfast category and everything that's under there. And there's the one for family. And we can also see here all the different canvas views and the overlap views. So this one here, if this is going to open for us, yep, is for dislike. So this shows us the cluster view for dislike. What else do we have here? For juice, um, cooked breakfasts. So people talking about healthy and diet and like. So any of these images you can just drag and drop straight into a Word report or a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and that's a good way to kind of demonstrate the kind of uh, graphical view which um, Quercos lets you have and quickly put those images into a project. So that's pretty much everything that we're going to cover today for the basic export options. Um, if you have anything that you did want to ask about Quercos or you wanted me to demonstrate today, just let me know in the little chat window down to the right. Um, but otherwise, I will um, let you know um, what we're going to be covering uh, next month. And we will work straight on those um, examples next time, which will be focusing on more detail about the CSV import um, and integrating Quercos with your workflow from online survey platforms and things like that. Okay, so that looks like everything for today. Um, as I said, do always drop me an email or contact us on Twitter or Google+. Plus. If there's anything you'd like us to cover in advance in one of these sessions, they're all made available on YouTube afterwards, so you can download them and watch them at will. Um, but thanks for dropping in and see you next month.